That beautiful song was by Grant Dermody, our special guest today. And Grant, welcome to the Friday Afternoon Music Mix. It's a pleasure to have you here today. Thank you so much for asking me to be here. I was introduced to your music uh, through your new um, CD called My Doni. And tell me a little bit about this. I know you're, uh, I think, originally from Seattle. Mm -hmm. And been around several different places, Alaska, and, and now into Louisiana. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, um, so the, uh, Dirk Powell and I met when we were doing a record with Eric Bibb called Deeper in the Well. And that was recorded at Dirk's studio in Bro Bridge, Louisiana. And we just kind of hit it off musically and personally. And we, when it came time to do my next record, which was called Sun Might Shine on Me, that came out in 2015. Um, I recorded it with Dirk in his studio and we had a great time. We got along really well musically and I think we made a really strong record. So when it came time to do another record, which was what my Doni uh, ended up being, we, um, we were going to do it kind of, most of my records have been pretty eclectic. My um, uh, lots of different genre, lots of different kinds of things happening, but the electric blues was so much fun to do and it came out so well we decided it, sometimes the record tells you what it wants to be. And so um, the record said, we're, we're going to do an electric blues record. So that's what we did. And um, it's been extremely well received and we're very grateful for that. So we've got another one planned for uh, May of uh, 2021. That's terrific. I noticed that uh, when I was reading uh, some information about my Doni, that this was the, first one of your albums and you have a, a a good collection here four solo albums and then also uh, a, a cd that you did with the improbabilities um that were with um then a, a, a trio johnson miller and dermody um you've got a good collection here but this is the first time that you went with amplified harmonica i understand from what i read um, for the whole record yes i've done amplified tunes like maybe one or two here and there but mostly um but this is the first time I've done a record that's almost all amplified harmonica. It had a real good response from my listeners. And I've had several people um, call me and say, this is really different. This is unlike a lot of the blues albums we've met. And you mentioned just previously in our conversation that you cross genres in this. And uh, the one thing that just jumped out at me was the, um, the Zydeco um, accordion that mm -hmm. you used in there. and uh, that really added a lot of flavor to you. Yeah, it sure did. Corey's yeah. great. Corey, Corey, I had never met Corey before he showed up in the studio that day. And uh, Corey Letter, I guess is his name, right? Corey Lede. Lede is how he pronounces yeah. that. Okay. He, yeah. That's the French way to say it. Uh, right. A lot of people can't get that. So he's, he'll, he'll settle for Ledet if that's what you want to say. <laughs> Ah, but, that's but he's, uh, no, but he, yeah, he, we had, like I said, we had never met and we just, um, we just locked in. It was really fun. The harmonica and the accordion are cousins, as you probably know, they're, right. both, they're both free reed instruments and, um, it's kind of, it's fun to lock in and just kind of get that. So yeah, he brought, he brought that kind of Zydeco feel to some of the more traditional blues things. And that's why it's not, it, that's why it doesn't sound like what you normally would think of as a blues tune. Immediately when I heard it, I kept thinking, this is an amazing recording, but I'm trying to figure out, you know, because it, it, the minute I had myself, I thought I had a pigeonhole, it would jump to the next one. It, you've, you've done a great job on this. And like I said, my audience has really um, uh, reacted favorably to it. So that's why I wanted to speak with you. And I, well, I thank you so much. That's wonderful to hear. That's great. Yeah. I, um, also, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, one of your CDs. Um, I think it was your second one called Lay Down My Burden in 2010. You had a, um, and you talk about it on your website, and I did a little research after that uh, about John Cephas and um, the guitar solo that you did it, or duet and with the harmonica. I'm anxious to hear that. I I, 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 you sound very proud to have done that with him. And unfortunately, just previous to his uh, passing. Yeah, that was the last recording that he did. Um, 
with anyone. And wow. uh, we were both teaching up at Port Townsend at the Blues, um, at the Blues Fest. Um, I, I, I taught there for many years. And that's that's where I got to be good friends with John Cephas, John Jackson, Phil Wiggins, um, John D. Holman, Ethel Caffey Austin, Aljamay Hinton, you know, some of the great acoustic blues musicians. I, I really got a chance to hang out and learn from them and play with them. So we did that tune and it was um, it was during a rough time. My dad had just died uh, not long ago. And then right after that, we found out that my mom had Alzheimer's and my wife had cancer. And um, so we were right in the middle of all of that and re recorded Hard Time Killing Floor Blues with John Cephas. We did it live. Um, no, no fixes, no nothing. Just sit down and do it. And uh, and John, uh, the first take was in, was really strong. The second take was the one we kept, which I think is otherworldly in, in, in terms of how good it is. John's singing and playing is so good on it. And so uh, my job was just to uh, make sure that the harmonica rises to that bar that was set. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> I'm sure you're very, very proud of that recording then. That's, that's yeah. incredible. What a yeah. great story. I knew there had to be a great story behind that. Thank you for telling me that. I also noticed on your website, and I think it's embedded in YouTube, um, a, a very nice recording that you did that I enjoyed very much of the Illinois blues. Oh yeah. Yeah. Who was yeah, that so guitar that's, player? That's on. Um, so that's from um, sun might shine on me. And that mm -hmm. was a tribute to John Cephas. Oh, it um, is. Okay. So because I have, because that was the, um, so that was my third record, the one that came after lay down my burden. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I had, you know, John, I hadn't done a record since John had passed. And so I wanted to make sure that we did a tune that, um, you know, that, that, was, that was kind of, you know, an homage to, to John. And uh, Illinois, John was great at Skip James tunes. I don't know. I don't think anybody played them better. And uh, that's Orville Johnson playing um, guitar. And that's um, Rich Del Grosso playing mandolin. They're, they're excellent musicians. I think that one of the things that I enjoyed so much in watching that, Grant, was the passion in your face. Mm. I mean, it, it was obvious that, that this was very, very uh, meaningful to you in that. And and the sound of that recording is is excellent. Really cool. good. Okay. And it is on that third uh, CD of yours, uh, um, Sun Might Shine On Me. Then. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. It's good. The other thing I wanted to talk about was... Um, I love the cover art. You know, a lot of people don't pay too much attention to that, but on uh, my Donnie, um, and I noticed that the, um, that the CD was dedicated to someone that was very close to you, Marilyn Conant. And I noticed in the cover art in the back of that photo that you had there was a picture. Um, I don't know if that was her. I don't think so. I assumed it was someone that you had uh, stand in, but I thought that was incredibly wonderful the way you did that. Uh, I've, I, I came back to that several times and then I, um, uh, I Googled her and then found out she was an amazing woman. Yeah. She was incredible. She was my fifth grade teacher and became, really? yeah. And became a lifelong friend and mentor and second mother and fiercest advocate and just as fierce a critic and was, uh, just an amazing, <laughs> amazing being who just was, um, in my corner since I was nine years old. Incredible. Obviously well loved. I read quite a bit about her and, and a, um, a standalone artist in her own right. From what Oh, tremendous singer Trem yep. um, and a, a genius teacher and more full of love than anybody I've, I've known. I think just, yeah, she was an incredible person. Just w what she did for other people was, uh, it just never stopped. It was like all day long, every day. She was always helping somebody. That's Doing great. Yeah. Um, the um, improbabilities, you had only one recording with them before mm -hmm. you went to the solo, and that was in 1998. Yeah. Uh, the, um, the song that you did with John Cephas was on an album that <laughs> caught me. And when I was reading about it, 
26th artist and seven studios that you put yeah. together for that CD. Yeah. That must have been an undertaking, to say the least. You know? Well, you know, it was like during the two years that my wife was sick, you know, before she passed away. And, and she, um, and so, in, I mean, it, it, it turned into a bunch of different things. It turned into um, a way of dealing with just, you know, enormous hard times and it also and it was kind of an outlet but it also ended up being about how does a person respond to those hard times and so uh i was traveling doing you know i was playing with eric bibb at the time and um so he you know he plays guitar on the first song and um i ended up just playing with a whole bunch of different people in different configurations in different studios all around the place and Eileen, my late wife, sang on the record. We did a version of um, Stephen Foster's Hard Times Come Again No More. And uh, wow. that's something that would have just scared her to death. She never would have been able to be in a studio and sing. But she figured if I can deal with cancer, I could deal with stage fright. So off she goes, you know. And it was, uh, it was beautiful. So it was very... Um, a lot of people have said that that record has helped them through go through similar things. I assure you we will play it on my show in the future. Uh, it's, I can't wait, actually. That's, that's terrific. Um, I wanted to also ask you, um, what you said you've got a new album that's coming out in 2021 that you're getting ready to work on. Um, do you find that um, in relocating to Louisiana that just gets you into a new phase in your music? Yeah, well, I have two records coming out. I've got, I play, I'm also in a duo with a fabulous guitar player named um, Frank Fatusky. He lives up in Portland, Maine. And we just finished, last weekend, we finished tracking um, an acoustic blues record that we're dedicating to John Jackson. So who was a, a huge mentor to both of us. Both of us. So um, that's, uh, we're excited about that. That'll be coming out pretty soon. Um yeah, so I mean, as far as Louisiana goes, it's um, hot. <laughs> it's an amazing musical place. It has more world class musicians per capita than I think any place I've been, except maybe Ireland. And um, and uh, and the culture is all about music and dance and food and community and just coming together. And of course, COVID has you know taken a big chunk out of that, but right. um, there will come a time when that will, you know, be back in full swing. So it's a good place to be. And I've been warmly welcomed there. And, um, and Dirk studio is there. And so off we go, you know, there's lots of opportunities to make music. You sound excited. You really yeah. do. Yeah. <laughs> I'm happy for you. I think that's great. I really do. Uh, one thing I wanted to ask you, and then I'll, I'll, uh, let you go. You've been so kind to join us today. Um, one other harmonica player that I have seen that I really enjoy a lot lives not too far from where you were. So I wondered if you had ever met him and that's John Popper. No, I have not. I have not met him. He, he's no. um, a character to say the least. I've seen him twice in concert, but uh, my understanding is he did. I don't, I've, this has been a couple of years ago. He lives in Snow, Snohomish County. So, I heard, yeah, I heard something about that. I don't know. I haven't, uh, we haven't crossed paths as of yet. I'm sure we will at some point. Oh, I hope you do. I hope you do. That would be great. Uh, my special guest today, uh, Grant Dermotti, has a new fabulous album out called My Doni that was released on May 8th. And I assume that it's available in every outlet, Grant. Yes. Um, yeah, Apple. You can get it any, in all of the usual places. <laughs> all the usual places. It's fantastic. Why don't we on our way out today, um, first of all, let me thank you. And I hope that you'll uh, come back and see us again. When COVID is over, we'd love to have you live in the studio where you could play some songs That'd for be great. us on the harmonic. I'd love to have you do that. But why don't we go out with the title cut um, of the great album uh, called My Doni. How's that sound? Sounds great. Thanks again, Grant, so much. Take care Thank and you. very best to you. Thank you. My best to both of you as well. Thanks very much.